a YouTube, this is Unlock6 for another YouTube video. Today I will show you how to restore your Kenwood TM241. Uh, this transceiver is known to have a uh, common issue with the display which will either be blank or will show random character on it. So I'm back. Um, yesterday night I just took apart the transceiver. It's not really uh, hard to do, uh, but you need to be careful with the connector on the front panel here, because they are quite fragile. Um, as for the, uh, the transceiver itself, there is the faceplate, and the issue I'm having with the display is likely due to this connector, and uh, the connector right there on the uh, LCD board. So, I also um, take the LCD board off, and you can see there is a sphere of contact, and it uses a Zebra connector, which is right there. And I'm not really a fan of this type of connector, because they are prone to having uh, problems, uh, connection problems after some years, because this is a... This is rubber material and it will uh, deteriorate over time. Uh, since I have <laughs> taken all the thing apart, I will redo this uh, this solder uh, point, um, this solder connection, and this one as well. Because you know, I figure out they are 22 years old and uh, they might also give a little bit of issue, yeah. Also, uh, the solder of the uh, the frequency uh, well the frequency knob here. I've noticed that they are cracked. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, maybe you can. Focus, come on. But you can see there is a cracked around the solder on both sides, so the switch just move freely and it will desolder the switch from the board or it will crack um, a trace on the PCB and I don't want this to happen so I will also uh, redo this to um, solder join so as for the transceiver itself it uses a Toshiba S-AV17 uh, power amplifier mine still works ok it would put about 47-48 watts so that's uh, that's okay, but I will change the thermal compounds behind it. As far as uh, cosmetically, it's not in bad of a shape for being sold. I'm the second owner of this thing, so it might be uh, because of this. Uh, so I may end up painting a little bit of some area on the, uh, the heat sink right there. So I'm back. Um, now I will try to uh, add some uh, flux, some solder flux, uh, just uh, on the connection right there and just basically heat them up uh, with the soldering iron. That's far better than it was before. This one is not as good as the other one, but it looks far better than what it was before. So now I will uh, clean uh, what's left of the flux on it. Now I resolder the uh, VFO switch uh, correctly. You can see there are no there are no no cracks in it. I've cleaned it also. And I've resoldered also the um, three connection for the VF on the ball, right there. Then I went on uh, reheating all this uh, solder joint there. It looks that didn't look too good, but now I'm sure that they 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 make proper contact. So now I've just. Uh, Reflow all those uh, solder chain right there, and I cleaned them the best I could. There is still some uh, solder flux around there, but it's can well, it's not that bad, and I'm sure that they make contact. Also, I've gone ahead and I take 
taken off the uh, power amplifier and the I don't know if you can see but there is the thermal grease well what's left on it because I think there are not a lot of it this could explain why this thing was so freaking out and I had to put a fan on it and there is the uh, power amplifier itself and for those wondering what's inside this power amplifier I just uh, uh, lift uh, off the uh, the plastic cover here and here is the power amplifier itself so basically it's full of transistors on mine there are no traces that appear damaged uh, which is normal because this power amplifier works very well <laughs> I don't have any issue with it, it would put like I said 46, maybe sometimes 48 watts so it's good so uh, I've just cleaned the uh, surface from the uh, the power amplifier. I've realized that there wasn't that much of thermal compound going on here. Well, there was because uh, I, I've removed some trace of it, but there wasn't a lot of it. I mean, you shouldn't put a lot, but there weren't enough. I'm sure there weren't enough on it. So now I'm ready to apply some new thermal compounds and I will use the Core Masters IC Essentials E1 which is not the best but it's not bad either. Um, I have some Arctic Silvers 5 but uh, I think it's overkill for this. I've also cleaned the uh, the inside of the, uh, the heat sink. Uh, I will apply now some new thermal paste and uh, put it back in the transceiver. And now, if you have the uh, faceplate button sticking out, um, this is due to uh, the rubber foam in there, uh, which is this uh, brown foam here, uh, deteriorating over, the ta over time. The solution is to use some uh, foam, adhesive foam, like this. Mine, I cut it off into small parts, and you put it uh, right behind the, uh, the buttons. And it will work like new. They won't stick out. If you have this, uh, these switches sticking out, like they should not do, <laughs> Just use a toothpick and some uh, glue stick, uh, like you use in school, you know, simple thing. And you put glue behind the switches there, and they won't stick out. As far as paint goes, I use this uh, black paint. And I've done a little bit of touch up on it. You can see it, but it's far better than being without paint at all. So, basically I will let it dry and uh, I will have my old friend back. Now the display works nicely. And let's try the relay. I'm at 5 watts here. So it's working really well. So that's it. Bye YouTube and see you in my next video.